Thornton talks about his bid for the Virginia House of Delegates, the seat now held by Republican Jim LaMunion, and Ron Moten talks about his decision to run for the Ward 7 seat on the D.C. Council as a Republican. Right now, though, Ron Moten talks about his decision to switch parties. He's running for the D.C. Council as a Republican. Right now, though, let's check in with Catherine Amenta. She's live in the News Channel 8 this Thursday. Our next guest caused a bit of a stir in local political circles last week when he announced that he's running for the D.C. Council as a Republican. Ron Moten, co-founder of the group The Peaceaholics, is well known for his work in the community, particularly working with young people and squashing beefs between rival crews. He also emerged uh, as a, a prime spokesman for uh, Mayor uh, Adrian Fenty's uh, re-election bid last year. It was not known, however, that he harbored feelings, secret feelings, I presume, for the Republican Party. Mr. Moten joins us now. Welcome back. It's good to have Thanks you for here. Thanks having me back, sir. Talk about your decision to uh, run for the D.C. Council in Ward 7, now uh, the seat now held by Yvette Alexander, as a Republican. Well, uh, over the last six years, I've gone down to Alabama, Mississippi, and Atlanta, and I have been mentored by several people who were with the great uh, Martin Luther King. And I found out that many of them were Republicans. And when they told me that, I said, you all don't make any sense. This is crazy. So over the last four years, as I've seen how our system in the District of Columbia has failed the people, and I started to analyze the data and look at what we've gotten over the last 40 years in the District of Columbia, which in many cases is four generations of poverty in places like Ben and Terrors, Burry Farms, Clay Terrors, and areas that I work in, and then I see what the city has done to address those issues. I don't see what, what, what can happen from being a Democrat at this period. And I see what our ancestors, such as Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, Harriet Tugman, and in some cases, people say before 1964, even King was a Republican. And what they did for our people and our country as Republicans on based upon the principles of education, uh, job creation through entrepreneurship, you know, and, and community businesses, neighborhood businesses started by the people in the community, which brings jobs to the community. When you saw about the spirituality that our people had at that time that got us uh, through obstacles and gave us more and principles and things of that nature, self-reliance. And I believe with the leadership that I can bring to the table, I can bring jobs, I can bring ethics, and I can make the city the great thing that we once enjoyed in Washington, D.C. You uh, you have shirts here distributing, uh, and it says yes, uh, Civil Rights Republican. It's and interesting. people are snatching them up. You are, would think people would run from is them. Is this a hot them. item? So oh, what's, yes. the, what's the Civil Rights Republican, and are you are you... Do you feel as though you're drawing a distinction with, say, the National Party, or, or I don't know? What? Well, first of all, I agree on a lot of things that, uh, I'm my own man. I agree on a lot of things that the National Party agree on. For instance, with President Obama, I love my president, I love him. However, with the Homeland Security Project, where we, pen, we put $3.4 billion right beside Burry Farms, and we have nobody working from our community. To me, this is a travesty. How do we spend $3.4 billion of stimulus money and in our community where we have uh, a four, almost a 40%, 30% unemployment rate, and it has nobody from the African-American community? This is not helping us. So we had to put things in place that would be creative in getting people to start their own business, bring back the Black Wall Street, bringing back the black rosewood that we had then when we were mighty people and we didn't count on somebody to give us hand-me-downs. You know, I'm not saying people don't need help. At one point in my life, I received food stamps. I needed help, but I didn't count on it for the rest of my life. I used it to move forward. So what I'm saying is we had to put people in a position in these communities, and they want help. A, a lot of people in our communities are entrepreneurs. They're just doing it in the wrong way. If we take these things and teach these young folks who are who are thirsty for this, we can we can change what's going on in our city. Do you think people get hooked on handouts? Yeah, it's addiction. It's an addiction. But what happens is when people lose hope and opportunity, all they can look for is a handout. So we have to get teach people that they can do better, show them as an example. In this city, we tend to destroy people who bring the message. We tend to destroy people who tell the truth. And I'm telling the truth today. What, has, what is going on in our city with a one party, where there's no balance, where there's no other ideas or ide ideologies that can change what's going on, we have failed the people. And I'm saying, I'm not trying to convert everybody into a Republican. I'm saying we have an option, and we go back to the principles of our ancestors, the civil rights Republicans, we can change what's going on in Washington, D.C. Where do your views st uh, match up or not match up with the, the National Party on issues like 
uh, choice of abortion rights, whatever terminology you would use, on, on marriage and on uh, Second Amendment rights? Well, first of all, when you, when, you, when you start talking about choice, that's something that I battle with. And I, I'm not clear on that yet, and I'm going to tell you why. It's, to me, it's a travesty when we take any life, right? But also, it's a travesty when we have children born in this world where parents are not prepared, they can't raise the child, and we see what it produces in the urban community. So both of them are bad situations. So that's something that I have to think on. Um, as far as Second Amendment, I believe everybody should have their Second Amendment rights. You know, people, people should have the right to due process. You know, I believe in that. You know, my people, my ancestors fought for that. Um, and, 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 you know, but in terms of, 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 of uh, uh, you know, a belief that uh, the Constitution affords us the right to have a gun in the home right. versus a belief that uh, the more guns that are out there, the more dangerous our communities are? Well, what I, what I really have a problem with is assault weapons, like machine guns making it into our community. You know, machine guns, you don't need a machine gun to hunt, you know, but the Constitution says that the person should have the right. Right, I'm getting to that. I think that, that, that people who are against the right of gays should concentrate more about the principles that we should put back in our, in our households because of me. I can't talk about what anybody's done. I, I've had children without being married, so I, can't, I don't have the right to judge anybody else and what they do. My thing is to teach people in the household, to put family back in our households, bring, get, to teach our children the importance of marriage, just like other are, people. Are, are two women raising a kid, mm -hmm. whether it was adopted or biological, are they a family? Are two women raising a kid, say that again? If you, if, if you have a lesbian couple uh -huh. and they're raising a kid, uh -huh. either because they adopted uh -huh. or because they gave birth. Well, I put it to you like is this. Is that a family? I put it to you like this. When I came up, um, I had two lawyers. Hold on, let me, let me talk. I had two <laughs> lawyers, uh, Debbie Roundtree and Gwendolyn Hayward, were prominent defense attorneys, and they helped raise me, all right? Um, I leave judgments up to God. I'm, just, I'm not God. You know, Jesus said he who without sin cast the first stone. All I want is to teach my people and my community the importance of family, and that's it. I don't, I'm not caught up on what other people do. I'm caught up on what we need to do to uplift our community, all right? As far as uh, uh, gay marriage and things of that nature, it's on the books in the District of Columbia. It's the law, so we don't even have to address that anymore. It's about treating people fairly, treat, treating people as human beings, some of my best friends. In fact, I've been going through hardships in my life right now because of this government who's personally tried to persecute me for standing up for the people. And there's been some of my gay friends who have stood with me and done the most for me out of any of these so-called gangsters in the city. So I have no problem with the gay community. I love and embrace the gay community. I just took 12 guys to a gay transsexual youth to a hearing on gay gangs they had in, in D.C. Uh, the other day. So I'm engaged with this community. I help this community. And, and I'm, I'm for everybody. Some people would say that you are are switching parties mm -hmm. to guarantee that you're on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. No uh, stumble in the primary right. where if, you know you run against Yvette Alexander mm -hmm. as because you did have to change parties right. to you were a Democrat up until just recently. Right. Um, so uh, there's a school of thought that says mm -hmm. uh, you go up against Yvette Alexander potentially in a crowded field mm -hmm. you could do well but if you come up short you're, that's it you're out of the game and she cruises to re-election in November you switch parties uh, you say I'm a Republican all of a sudden this guarantees you're there uh, you get to fight the whole way you're on the ballot presumably right in November right well first of all I could have ran as an independent right if I didn't believe what the, the concepts and principles uh, of the Republican and that Party. was the follow-up question right, right. And <laughs> like Michael Brown did you know he's a true Democrat running as it ran as an independent that's not why I'm doing this I'm doing this because deep in my heart and my soul I believe the principles of the Republican Party the same principles that uh, Frederick Douglass father the same principles that Booker T Washington father the same principles that Harriet Tugman father can uplift us out of the condition in fact it helped our country and it is something that our country needs now and it needs to be balanced like I said I'm not trying to convert everybody to a Republican but I know that the principles of the Republican Party is what's missing in Washington DC 
and I'm here to bring it back. And I know a lot of Washingtonians have been grandfathered into the Democratic Party, and I'm here to educate them on the past so we can have a great future. Given your colorful past, and we love you, yes. were you surprised that the D.C. GOP is embracing your switch? No, because it's not about, it's about what's right. It's the right thing to do. Um, my colorful past, I've been <laughs> crucified for telling the truth. I mean, how many things have been thrown at me and then it comes out it really wasn't nothing? I mean, the past mayor was done like that. I mean, both of us have done some things that damaged ourselves, but nothing criminal, nothing that we purposely did for the most part. And, you know, I'm my own man. You know, I would stand for the people. I would speak for what's right, whether it's Republican or Democrat. I only got 45 seconds left. Are you following the ethics debate? And, and is there one prescription you would offer in terms of the scandal climate that we some say we see we, that we see common sense common sense I mean some of the things that have happened down in the Wilson building is a common sense and we just need leadership that will stand up and not take sides because I'm a Democrat that's why we need a Republican in the Wilson building people will not stand up and go across their line their party line and affiliation to the stand up for what's right because they think it's something wrong with standing up and saying is there something wrong with stealing three hundred thousand dollars and buying an Audi is something wrong with doing this and doing that you know so my thing is we got to stand up for what's right other than that if we don't stand up we might as well free everybody's in prison with a nonviolent crime if we don't stand up and deal with this stuff in the Wilson building am I right or wrong Ron Moten candidate for the DC Council Ward 7 as a Republican uh, good to have you with us we're gonna right. hold you to the promise of uh, the first debate you and Yvette Alexander we can, uh, we can right debate here. next week we don't have to wait till after the primary I win the debate hands Ron down Thank thanks you. back with the program note after this <laughs> Dave Lucas weekdays on News Channel 8 working weekends evenings mornings no focus no career I thought man I'm gonna be stuck find it at tbdnewstalk.com we're online as well see you there <clears throat> stick around for let's talk